The second antenna parameter we will be discussing in this course is antenna bandwidth. So almost all of the performance characteristics of a given antenna will vary with frequency. The radiation pattern of the antenna, the strength of that radiation, the polarization of the radiated wave, the input impedance of the antenna, the efficiency of the antenna, and a host of other characteristics are all frequency dependent. As an example, the performance of a rectangular patch antenna is closely tied to the resonance of its geometry. So the antenna characteristics of a rectangular patch vary rapidly with small changes in frequency. This is typically considered a narrow band antenna topology. On the other hand, the performance of a pyramidal horn antenna is tied to the behavior of the guided wave modes in the throat of the antenna. The antenna characteristics of a pyramidal horn vary slowly with small changes in frequency. This is typically considered a broadband antenna topology. An antenna's bandwidth is the span of frequencies over which certain relevant characteristics of its performance fall within an acceptable range. The particular performance characteristics that are considered when defining bandwidth and the acceptable range of variation in these characteristics varies depending on the application. The most common performance characteristic considered when defining an antenna's bandwidth is its return loss, or S11. A typical rule of thumb threshold for an acceptable return loss is 10 dB. So if the return loss is above 10 dB, or if S11 is below negative 10 dB, an antenna is typically considered to have acceptable return loss. For the graph shown here, the antenna's simulated S11 is below negative 10 dB from about 470 MHz to 490 MHz. So this antenna might be considered to have a 20 MHz bandwidth, or a percent bandwidth of approximately 4.2%. Again, return loss is only one option for defining the bandwidth of an antenna. There are many other antenna figures of merit which are used to judge antenna performance, and any one of them, or any combination of them, might be used to define bandwidth in any given situation. One such critical antenna parameter is antenna directivity, which is a 3D directional plot of radiated power. So you might define the bandwidth of your antenna as the range of frequencies which result in some minimum proportion of the signal traveling in a particular direction. Another option is antenna gain, which is the same as directivity except that it's scaled by the antenna efficiency. So with respect to gain, you would be defining the bandwidth of your antenna as the range of frequencies which result in some minimum power radiated in a particular direction. Or antenna polarization, which is the polarization of the wave radiated from the antenna, which can also change with frequency. Or beam width, which is the sweep of angles over which the antenna directivity is highest. Or side lobe levels, which is a measure of the strength of radiation in undesired directions. If you're interested in exploring these and other antenna parameters through simulation, I would invite you to check out ANSYS's High Frequency Structure Simulator, or HFSS, which allows you to plot all of these parameters for any simulated antenna. If you'd like to check it out and you're watching this video on YouTube, I'll put a link to a simple HFSS dipole simulation tutorial in the description. If you're watching on the ANSYS Innovation Courses website, there will be a link in the course handouts.